Hi everybody, welcome to week nine, lesson one for year five maths. Today we're looking at probability and chance. Okay, so what we're learning to do today is represent the probability of events that have an equal likelihood. So when I'm talking about probability, I'm talking about the chance of something happening and where it has an equal likelihood, it means it has the same chance of happening. So we're gonna use some probability words or chance words to indicate different likelihoods, the different chance of those events happening. And we're gonna list outcomes of chance experiments that have an equal likelihood using a tree diagram. So there's a lot of different vocabulary that we're gonna look at this week. Um, and I'll go through that in a minute. So firstly, this idea of chance or probability, it's about what is the chance of something happening? Um, is it probable that it will happen? And it's all to do with this idea of uncertainty. So it's a really interesting area of maths. Typically with maths, we kind of are dealing with, um, you know, finding a solution and there is an element of certainty. So let's go to something really basic. Two plus two, I can say with certainty that the answer is four because I can follow a process. My answer is four, I can demonstrate that. I know that any time I add two plus two, the answer will always be four. However, with chance and uncertainty, uh, I'm looking at things where I don't actually know what the result is gonna be with any level of certainty. So for example, with the lotto, if I put in a lotto ticket, um, there's a machine and it scrambles all the balls around and it randomly picks um, seven of those balls and they're the, you know, the winning uh, numbers for that week. Um, I don't know, nobody has any control over which balls are selected. The idea is that it's completely random. So it's uncertain um, which balls or which numbers are gonna be drawn. Same with a dice roll, assuming you're rolling the dice, um, not kind of rigging it by you know, deliberately making it land on a particular number. Um, if you're rolling the die uh, completely randomly, um, there's a chance that it could be a six. But there's also another chance that it could be a three or a five. So you don't have any control over what the outcome is. Um, same with a deck of cards. If the deck of cards is shuffled um, properly and so it's, all the cards are random um, and you draw a card either from the middle or from the top or from the bottom, um, you don't know what card that's gonna be. It's uncertain. Um, you have an idea of what card it could be and it might be the card you're thinking of but it might also not be so you don't have any control over it now chance and probability aren't just to do with you know games of chance or with gambling um, there's so many other applications for them um, in particular science there's a lot of uncertainty in science um, you know what's the, the result of a particular experiment or what's the likelihood or chance of something happening so for example in genetics what's the likelihood that some DNA or some genes will mutate? Um, there'll be a change um, in those genes or in the, the, the DNA um, to cause a mutation. What's the likelihood of that happening? Also in business, um, having an idea of you know, the chance of something happening or the, the likelihood of something happening is really important. If you think of insurance companies um, and insuring people, for example, in a car insurance, um, they're insuring people so that if they have a car accident, that they'll get the, the person who owns the car and has the insurance will get some money to either repair the car or get a new car. Um, insurance companies need to know, you know how many people are gonna have a car accident in any given year. And so how much should they be charging their customers to make sure that they've got enough money to cover them if they have a car accident, but also enough money that the company makes a profit. So nobody knows how many car accidents there are gonna be in any given year. Um, it's completely uncertain, but they can look at data or information from you know, previous years um, and get an idea of you know, what's the likelihood or the chance of people you know, in a particular area or a particular age group or a particular type of car having a car accident. And they can make their calculations based on that. Same with weather forecasts. You know, what's the chance that it's gonna rain today? You know, I looked at the um, the Bureau of Meteorology for today, and said it's a 95% chance that it will rain today. Um, that means that there's a high level of chance that it's gonna rain. 
But even with um, weather forecasts, there's no absolute certainty. Weather forecasts can be wrong. Um, they're using information you know, about air pressure systems and temperatures and um, a whole lot of information to try to get a level of, um, of you know, what's the likelihood that it's gonna rain. Um, even though it says it's a 95% chance that it will rain today, um, there's still a 5% chance that it's not going to rain. Um, so again, there's a level of uncertainty. And even then, that's not, you know, it's just based on the science that we have. We can't actually predict the future. Um, same with sporting matches. There's a level of uncertainty of who's going to win. Um, now, sometimes that's framed based on, you know, what's the performance of the team and who's playing. Um, but ultimately, assuming the teams can't draw, um, there's, you know, an equal likelihood that each team will win. There's two outcomes, you know, they either win or lose. Um, so there's an equal likelihood there. Now we know that's not necessarily the case with a particular team because some teams are better than others, but again, there's a level of uncertainty. So that's what we're looking at, chance. Um, it's where we don't actually have a certain outcome, but we're trying to figure out how likely it is that something will happen. Probability, the chance of something happening or something being the case. So for example, the chance of a die lying on six. Now a die is the singular of dice. Um, that's why I say a die. Or the probability that people have two TVs at home. Now, um, we don't know how many people, let's say in Sydney, have two TVs at home. Um, but we could maybe get a small sample of, of people and then sort of go, well, you know, um, half the people that we surveyed had two TVs. Therefore, we can maybe say that half of Sydney has two TVs. Um, we don't know for certain, but that, that's the, the chance of, of something being the case. A really important word you'll hear me use this week is outcome. So that's the possible result of an experiment or a trial. So we'll do a few you know, chance experiments. You'll see me um, talk about particular experiments involving chance. Um, an outcome is a particular result or an event. So for example, the outcome of rolling a die could be a one, two, three, four, five, or six. They're all outcomes of that particular chance experiment. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at is probability words. Now you'll have come across these in previous years. Um, so this might hopefully be a little bit of revision, um, but we have different kind of gradients of um, probability. So for example, we start with certain. So this is something that we know will most definitely happen. There's no question about it happening. So for example, um, a calendar is a really good uh, example. We've got Monday the 2nd of August here. We know that the day following it is going to be Tuesday, the 3rd of August. So that event is certain. Something that's likely is where, well, there is a chance that it might not happen, but um, there's a pretty good chance of it happening. So I think there's a pretty good chance of me getting a present for my birthday. It's not certain everybody might forget. Um, but, you know, in previous years, I, I always get a birth, birthday present. So I'm going to say it's, it's, it's likely. Um, not entirely certain, because there is a chance that it might not happen, but it's something that I think you know, is fairly likely to happen. Something with an even chance. I did talk about sporting matches before, assuming that they can't draw and each team is equally skilled. There's an even chance of either winning or losing. There's two outcomes there. So you know, it's one or the other. Something that's um, unlikely, for example, for me would be you know, eating cupcakes for dinner. Um, I don't, I'm not going to eat cupcakes for dinner tonight, probably. Um, but there is a chance that, you know, on a whim, I might decide, oh, do you know what? I'm going to go and get, get cupcakes and eat them for dinner instead of having a proper dinner. Um, so there is still a chance. It's not impossible. I can do that. Um, but it's very unlikely that I'm going to do that. And lastly, something that's impossible or no chance, we've got a jar and it's full of blue marbles. Um, there's no chance of drawing a pink marble out of that jar. It's just not possible. That's because there's no pink marbles in there. Now, some people say, well, nothing's impossible. Well, that's true to a certain extent, but based on the information we have and being realistic about it, so these aren't magic marbles that change color. Um, these are just regular blue marbles. There's no chance of drawing a marble out of there that isn't blue. Okay, now let's look at equal likelihood. This is where something has the same chance of happening. So for example, um, rolling a die, 
we've got six different numbers we can get. Now we know that a die is a cube um, and each side is the same size. And assuming you roll the die correctly, there's an equal chance that you'll either get a two or a four or a five or a six or a one. Um, even though often we wanna get a six, the die isn't rigged so that we never get a six or it's less likely to get a six. That's just the way it happens. There's an equal likelihood of getting a one. Now with the idea of equal likelihood, that doesn't mean that if I roll a one, then the next time I roll the die, you know, it's more likely that I'll get one of these other numbers. I could keep on rolling ones. Um, that has it has no bearing on the fact that um, that I won't get these other numbers or I'll keep on getting one. Let's say we've got four cards, um, so four queens. Um, they're completely shuffled, um, and I draw one of the cards. There's an equal likelihood of getting, you know, the queen of spades, um, queen of diamonds, queen of clubs, or queen of hearts. If I put the cards back again and shuffle them again, it's just as likely that I'll get the queen of spades again, um, or I might draw another card there. It's equal chance, equal likelihood. Um, a really classic case of equal likelihood is you know, flipping a coin, heads or tails. Now, some people argue that this is actually, um, in reality, you can kind of rig this by making sure that the, the coin, the, the face of the coin that you want, um, the outcome you want, you make sure that you have that facing up when you flip the coin, there's a slightly greater chance that that will be the outcome. But we're thinking about a theoretical coin, that means a coin that um, can't be rigged or it's not being um, influenced by any other factors. Basically, it's just choosing one or the other outcome based on random chance. Um, so our two outcomes here are tails or heads, so they have an equal likelihood as an even chance of them happening. Um, just because I flip you know, the coin and I get tails doesn't mean the next time I'm going to get heads. I can keep on flipping tails you know, hundreds of times over. Um, every time I flip that coin, it's like I'm starting the experiment again. It has no bearing on what the outcome is going to be. There's an equal likelihood of it happening. So now let's look at tree diagrams. So these are a really useful way of finding outcomes for a chance experiment where the outcomes are equally likely. So it's kind of mapping all the possible outcomes. So I'm going to start with a deck of playing cards. That's, you know, um, hearts, uh, diamonds, clubs, and spades. And I'm gonna take out the joker, so that will give me 52 cards. That's the number of playing cards in a standard deck. Half of them are red and half of them are black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a card out each time. I'm gonna register right down whether it's red or black. And I'm gonna do that three times. Each time I've drawn the card out and written down whether it's red or black, I'm gonna put it back into the deck shuffle it around and then start over again. That way I'm making sure that there's always 52 cards in the deck so that the chance doesn't change of drawing a red or a black. All right, so let's start. So I'm gonna do my first draw. So I've got two outcomes here. I've got red or black. Then I'm gonna uh, write down what I get, go into my second draw. Now here's where it gets a little bit interesting. I'm also going to look at the combination of cards that I draw out. So let's say I drew a red first, and then on my second draw, I also drew a red. I'd be following this part of the tree diagram. Now, each of these outcomes here, um, let's say we did this, you know, map this out before we did the experiment. Each of these outcomes, you know, one, two, three, four, are equally likely to one another. That means they have the same chance of happening. Now I'm, let's do our third draw. And again, it kind of splits off into two. So now um, I might have done you know, red, red, and I've ended up with another red. So for my different outcomes, I've got you know, three red. That would, would be the outcome I've achieved. Um, but it's just as likely to get any of these other outcomes um, if you'd started from the beginning. Um, even though three reds might seem unlikely, because it's like, well, that, you know, three reds looks a little bit strange, shouldn't it be a combination of red and black? It's just as likely as any of these other combinations. Um, I could get three black, you know, it's just as likely, equally likely. 
And down the bottom here, I can see that this first draw, I've got two outcomes. The second draw, you've got four outcomes. And the third draw, there are eight outcomes. So it's a great way of finding, you know, how many possible outcomes are there where there's an equal chance of the outcomes occurring. So that's what you're going to do today in your activity. So our main ideas from today's lesson, you know, probability and chance is concerned with how likely an event or an outcome is, where it's uncertain whether it will happen or how likely it is it will happen. So all about uncertainty and likelihood. We can describe probability using probability words, which you would have used before, certain, likely, even chance, unlikely and impossible or no chance. Outcomes of chance experiments where each outcome is equally likely to occur can be represented using a tree diagram, which we just did with the red and black experiment. And equal likelihood does not mean that half the time I'll get one outcome and half the time I'll get another. So assume I've got two outcomes, you know, red or black, doesn't mean that, you know, if I draw red on that first go, then the next one has to be black. Um, if I keep putting that card back into the deck, I could keep on drawing out red cards or I could keep on drawing out black cards. Um, that's the way chance goes. There's no um, pattern necessarily. Um, there's an equal chance of it happening. So there's an, each time I could just keep on drawing out a red card. Okay, guys, thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. All right, welcome back everybody. This is lesson two for year five maths for week nine. Today, we're looking at fractions to represent chance or probability. So today, we're learning to represent probability or chance using fractions. That's so a probability of a particular outcome. Um, to do this, we need to identify the number of favorable outcomes in a chance experiment. So when I'm talking about favorable outcomes, um, that's the one we're looking for. That's, that's the outcome we're looking for. So for example, with my um, red card, black card chance experiment, if I wanted to know, um, you know what's the likelihood or chance of getting a red card, um, the red card is the favorable outcome. That's the outcome I'm looking for. Um, to do this, you'll also need to identify the total number of outcomes. So we did that yesterday with the uh, card experiment. Again, we found there were eight different combinations of red and black cards you could get. And then represent the relationship between these two values, so the favorable outcomes and the total number of outcomes, as a fraction. So we're going to look at that today. So one particular chance experiment um, that we like to use to represent you know, probability or chance is this idea of you know, marbles or lollies in a jar. Now, I'm going to have to preface this first that this is a jar that you know we can see what color marbles are in here. Um, but if you were drawing the marbles, um, you're either blindfolded or the jar, you can't actually see inside the jar. We just know that there's you know, three blue marbles and three orange marbles. And it also doesn't reflect, you know, well, the three blue marbles are on the top and three orange marbles, you know, are kind of closer to the bottom. Um, it's really just showing, you know, what's the population in this jar. So imagine, yep, this is what it looks like. Then it gets completely scrambled up and you can't see inside it. Um, because some people go, well, of course you're going to get the blue marbles because they're the ones closer to the top. That's not what this diagram is telling you. The diagram is just telling you, you know, this is what the population of the marbles looks like inside. There's three blue, three orange. They're completely scattered around. Um, so don't ever can kind of use the diagram in that way. Okay, so let's look at this. We've got our number of marbles. We've got three blue and three orange. And our total number of marbles is six. So what's the probability of drawing a blue marble? Well, I know that there are six marbles altogether and three of them are blue. So my probability of drawing a blue marble is three six or three over six. And I can also represent this as a half. One, I can see that half the marbles are blue, but I also know that half is an equivalent fraction to three six. That means it is the same as three six. If I divide three by three, I get one. It's oh, a terrible three. And if I divide six by three, I get two. So they are equivalent. They mean the same thing. Now, same goes for orange. I've got three orange marbles. Um, 
and I've got six marbles all together, so my probability of drawing an orange marble is 3 6, or again, 1 half. Now, the probability of drawing either an orange or a blue marble is 6 over 6, or 6 6. That's because there are six marbles in there, and all the marbles are either blue or orange. Um, or another way of expressing that is as one, because we know that six sixth is the same as a whole, and we know that a whole is one. So we need to use our knowledge of fractions here. So when we have a probability represented as one, that means it is certain. Let's look at a jar again, but with different marbles inside. So now we have a total of 10 marbles. I can see that there are five that are green, two that are orange, two purple, and one pink. So the probability of drawing a green marble is five tenths. That's because there's five green marbles, 10 marbles altogether. So representing the marbles as a, the green marbles as a proportion of the total population of marbles is five tenths. Or I can also see that there are half of the marbles are green. So I can say that there are half. These two are equivalent fractions. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. If I look at my pink marble, I can see that there's only one pink marble. And there are 10 marbles, so the probability of drawing a pink marble is 1 tenth. For the orange and purple marbles, I have uh, two purple marbles and two orange marbles. So the probability of drawing a orange marble or a purple marble um, well, one of each, sorry, I should say, so probably drawing an orange marble is two tenths, and a purple marble is also two tenths, or I can represent that as one fifth. Two divided by two is one, and divided by two is five, so it's one fifth. And lastly, the probability of drawing a marble of any kind is ten tenths. That's because there are ten marbles in there, so if you put your hand in there, took a marble out, it's, it's going to be a marble of some description, so it's ten tenths. And we also know that that's the same as one. So it means it is certain you will always draw a marble if you put your hand in there and, and grab one of them. The probability of drawing a cupcake on the other hand is um, zero tenths or zero. That means it's impossible. It's, there's no chance of it happening. That's because there's no cupcakes inside that jar. So you can't just magically pull out a cupcake. Now, we looked at our probability or chance words yesterday. And today I can also just match them up with these different fractions. So here we knew it was certain to draw a marble out of any kind. So um, certain would match up with 10 tenths or one. So anytime we have one, um, in, when we're talking about probability, it means that it is certain. Something that is likely, you know, drawing a green or an orange marble. So I've got three, sorry, five green marbles and two orange marbles. That's a total of seven marbles altogether. Um, out of the larger total of marbles, it's seven tenths, so it's fairly likely. It's a greater chance, a larger chance than even chance. Even chance is kind of like halfway between one and zero, so we represent it as a half. Or here we could also say that it's five tenths, you know, so it's an even chance of drawing a green marble or another kind of marble. Um, it's unlikely that you'll draw a purple marble because there's only a um, two out of 10 chance there or two tenths, or we can also represent that as one fifth. And it's impossible to draw a black marble um, because there are no black marbles in that jar. So it's a zero tenth chance or we represent impossibility or no chance as zero. Now, another chance experiment you can run is a spinning wheel. Now assuming you're spinning it correctly with the same amount of force um, and it's just basically just completely random, um, it's not rigged. Here we've got eight different outcomes because I can see that the spinning wheel has been split into eights. Three of those are hearts, two of them are stars, one cross, one square, one triangle. So I can represent my probabilities as fractions my heart says three eighths, my star has two um, eighths or one quarter because this is one quarter of the spinning wheel um, on one quarter of the you know, outcomes. Cross is one eighth, square is one eighth, and a triangle has one eighth. 
Now, what you might notice is that if I decide to add up all these probabilities, I end up with um, eight eights or one. So when we add up the probability of all the different outcomes in a chance experiment, it will always equal one because we're representing it as fractions. And we know that these are fractions here of a whole. So the, the whole is all the outcomes, the total number of outcomes, and these are the, the, the probability of the different outcomes. Okay, so your main ideas from today, um, and this is really important, particularly this first one, is that you can represent the probability of an outcome using a fraction. So here I've got P, which means probability, equals the number of favorable outcomes um, divided by the total number of outcomes. So here, let's say I wanted to draw purple out of the jar. I can see that there are two purple marbles that I could possibly draw. I could either draw this one here or this one here. So that's the number of favorable outcomes. I want to get purple. And then the total number of outcomes, well, there are 10 marbles in there all together. So I put 10 down the bottom, it's two tenths. We also saw that we can represent probability using an equivalent fraction. So I know that I can simplify this um, from two tenths down to one fifth. Um, if I divide two by two and 10 by two, I ended up with one and five or one fifth. Now, both of them are correct, but I, you know, um, this one is probably a little bit more um, accessible to people because it's easier to divide something um, you know, by five than rather you know, by 10 mentally, but both of them are completely correct. Um, the sum of the probabilities of an outcome of a chance experiment is equal to one. We just saw that with a spinning wheel where we added up all the different fractions representing the probability of the different outcomes and it equaled one. And probability does not mean that for every 10 draws, you will always draw five greens. Uh, so that's an example here. We know that there are um, five green marbles in here. Um, it doesn't mean that each time, if you drew um, 10 marbles out, making sure that you replace them at the end, that um, out of those 10 draws, five of them will be green. You might keep on drawing the pink one, or you might keep on drawing an orange one. Um, there is, of course, a greater chance of drawing a green one, um, but it doesn't mean that that's the way it will go. You, you must um, draw five green. Remember, probability is all about uncertainty. It gives us some idea or some indication of what the outcome might be, but it doesn't give us certainty about what the outcome will be. All right, thanks guys for listening. I'll see you on Thursday for your last probability lesson for the week. You don't have a video lesson for tomorrow. All right, bye-bye. Welcome back, everybody. This is week nine, lesson three, Thursday for year five maths. Today, we're just looking at probability on a number line. It'll be a nice short lesson for today. So today, we're learning to represent probability on a number line from zero to one. And we're gonna order our probability words um, on that number line. So remember our probability words are certain, likely, equal chance, unlikely, and no chance or impossible. We're gonna represent that, or recognize, I should say, that zero means impossible and one means certain. So we looked at that yesterday. And we're also gonna represent probability using decimals. So these are our probability words that we looked at earlier this week, certain, likely, even chance, unlikely, impossible, or no chance. Um, and we're gonna, I, I match them up to different events. That's what you'll be doing today. You'll have some um, sentences which describe a particular event and you need to think, you know, is it likely, is it certain, unlikely, etc. And yes, so today what you're gonna be doing is placing these chance words or probability uh, words, impossible, even, certain, unlikely, and likely on a number line between zero and one. So yesterday when we looked at this example of the uh, marbles in a jar, we saw that you know the chance of drawing a marble out of that jar is um, 10 tenths because there are 10 marbles. If you put your hand in there and draw a marble out, the likelihood of it being a marble is you know um, 10 tenths. Therefore, it's got a 
um, likelihood of 10 tenths or one, therefore it is certain. It's certain you'll draw a marble out. It's impossible that you'll draw a cupcake out because there's no cupcakes inside there. So there are zero cupcakes, there are 10 marbles, so it's impossible. We can represent that as zero. The 10 outcomes are marbles, they're not cupcakes, so it's zero cupcakes, 10 marbles altogether, impossible. So we uh, put it impossible down here by zero. An even chance, you have an even chance of drawing um, a green marble compared to another colored marble because there are five green marbles. So five green marbles out of 10 marbles altogether, it's five tenths. Or we also knew we could represent that as half. So it has an even chance. So an even chance is represented at five tenths or one half. So it's halfway between zero and one. Um, anything that's unlikely, <clears throat> So for example, pink is unlikely because it's only one of them. So I've got one tenth, um, but I can also represent that with decimals. We know there's a relationship between decimals and fractions, particularly with tenths, um, 0.1. We know that this place value here is tenths. So here I've got one tenth and above here I've got one tenth. So they both appear on the same point of the number line. Same with the orange marbles, there are two of them, so we have a two tenth chance of uh, drawing them out. Um, here I've got 0 0.2, um, the two is in the tenths place, so I've got two tenths. They're both, um, pink and orange, are both in this unlikely area. So anywhere between uh, 0 0.1 and 0 0.4, we'd say it's unlikely, anything that's less than even, um, so here, anything that's less than even or less than half is unlikely. Anything that is greater than half, we generally say it's likely. Um, so for example, drawing a green and an orange. Um, so there are two orange and five green. So that's seven um, favorable outcomes for us out of a total number of 10. So our chance is either seven tenths or 0 0.7 and would say that that's likely. So today you don't need to worry about, um, you know, calculating the total number of outcomes. You really need to think about, is it likely or unlikely? Is it impossible, even chance or certain? And then either using a, um, a fraction or a decimal from this number line, just match it up with a particular event. So you'll be given a scenario, um, you know, what's the likelihood, for example, that with, with this jar, what's the likelihood of drawing out a blue marble? Well, there's no blue marbles in there. So I know it's impossible. So the chance is gonna be zero. What's the chance of drawing out a pink marble? Well, there are, there's only one pink marble in there. So it's unlikely and it's a 0 0.1. And that's all you'll need to do today. All right, I'm not even gonna bother with uh, main points at the end because it's a fairly simple lesson for today. If you'd like, if you found this is pretty simple, it's not too difficult. Um, if, if you like, feel free to go on and try some of the year six content as well. It's a little bit trickier um, if you're finding you're kind of breezing through this. Um, this is all the year five content for the week. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, this week's lessons and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.